Um, my paper is going to talk on uh, dental anomalies, a summarized information. I'm going to talk on um, dental anomalies, but uh, in summary. My presentation outline, as it as, as is being uh, seen on the screen, is as follows. We have introduction, then we have acquired anomalies, developmental anomalies, causes of dental anomalies, genetic defects, environmental causes, and then conclusion. We start with introduction. Dental anomalies are abnormalities uh, that are present in the oral cavity or the teeth, which are uh, introducing significant aesthetic and functional problems in both the lower and the upper jaws. They are categorized into two broad uh, classes. We have the acquired abnormalities, that is the abnormalities that are being acquired. And then we have the developmental anomalies, which happens during the developmental process of the tooth or teeth. Acquired tooth disorders include but not limited to, we have tooth ankylosis, um, which is the fusion of the bone and cementum, which is a progressive disorder or abnormality of the tooth eruption. And it has effects on the occlusion uh, of the teeth generally. Another example is the tooth resorption. Tooth resorption is a dental injury or irritation that causes loss of a part of the tooth or even the tooth as a whole. Then we have the pop stone. The pop stones are some nodular calcified masses which appears on either the coronal or root portion of the pop of a tooth. Then we have the abrasion which has to do with the losing of the enamel of the tooth due to some mechanical actions that comes in contact with the tooth from outside. Then we have erosion, which is the loss of the surface of the tooth or teeth as a result of acids being taken or eaten by the person. Then we have syphilitic hypoplasia. As the name implies, this uh, is a hypoplasia of the enamel due to congenital syphilis. And we have the molar incisor hypomineralization. This also is a type of an enamel defect which affects mostly the first molars of the tooth uh, and the incisors of the permanent dentition. Uh, then we have, we said, sorry, please. These abnormalities, developmental anomalies, exist in both deciduous and permanent dentition. You can find abnormalities of the teeth either in the deciduous dentition, that's the children's uh, dentition, or the permanent dentition, which is the adult dentition. These abnormalities are divided into five groups. We have abnormalities in size. We can have abnormalities in number. We, are, we have supranumerary teeth. You, you, you can find many teeth, more than the normal teeth in someone's uh, oral cavity. And we have abnormalities in the morphology of how the teeth are being arranged. And we, have, we can also have abnormalities in the shape. That's 
the structures of the tooth. And you can also have uh, abnormalities in the location of the tooth. That is where the teeth uh, is being located in the oral cavity. Developmental anomalies continuous. We said developmental anomalies show different forms such as germination, fusion, concrescence, dilaceration, DE, which is dental evaginatus. We have NML pulse, torodontism, opaque shaped laterals. All these are the forms that uh, developmental abnormalities can, can, can show. All the teeth can have these uh, appearances. Others include dentinogenesis imperfecta, which is uh, a, def a defect in the dental, in the dentine of a tooth. And we have amelogenesis imperfecta, which also is a defect we, uh, of the enamel. Then we have hypodentia, which has to do with less number of teeth present in the mouth. And we have hyperdentia, which uh, literally means increased number of teeth. That is supranural teeth. You can have as many teeth as you can inside uh, the oral cavity, which is also an abnormality. Next slide, please. What causes uh, dental anomalies? Majority of dental abnormalities are inherited. That means if the patient has a familial history, if one or two uh, people in the family has dental abnormalities, there is every tendency that another person of that same family can have uh, the same uh, abnormality. They are caused by inherited disposition or as a result of unstructured genetic mutation. That is during uh, the, the embryonic process when the teeth are being formed. If there is migration of cells, this can cause some unstructured genetic mutation. Another cause of Dental abnormalities are the environmental factors. We also have the traumatic and nutritional causes. All these are causes of uh, uh, dental abnormalities. The genetic defects. The most widely spread genetic craniofacial abnormality is clefting of the lips and palate and opalate. We have cleft palate and uh, cleft lip, or you can even have both the palate and the, and the lip. According to National Institute of Dental and Craniofacial Research uh, in 2019, it was estimated that in every 600 baths, we have one uh, patient being given birth to which either cleft of the lip or cleft of the palate or both. And it was, it was discovered that these uh, cleft lip or palate do happen mostly in boys than in girls. And also if there is, as I've mentioned earlier, if there is a familial history, there is every tendency that uh, Another person of the, another uh, newborn of the family might have the clefting of the lip or palate or both of them. Environmental causes, environmental abnormalities or anomalies are caused by external forces such as the diet, the diet which influence the health of the teeth and gums. The overuse of fluoride in the diet can cause spots on the teeth. If the fluoride content of our food is high, we need the fluoride in the food. But if the content is too high, it can cause spots on the teeth. Most especially here in Nigeria, uh, like people that comes from the northeast, some state in the northeast and some parts of the northwest in states like uh, Sokoto, 
you will find out that because of the high level of fluoride content in their drinking water, you will find out that people that come from those areas have some spots on their teeth, which is uh, uh, NML. Excuse me. Next slide. Hello. Poor nutrition can easily cause scurvy, which is a part of dental abnormalities as a result of lack of vitamin C, which can affect the periodontion. The periodontion is the, uh, the supporting structures of the teeth. And once these supporting structures of the teeth are being affected, that can cause swelling and bleeding, and which may eventually lead to loss of the tooth or the teeth if uh, proper treatment is not given as at when due. Next slide. In conclusion, we said careful examination and thorough treatment planning is essential for is essential for developmental anomalies of the teeth and the presence of one of anomaly. The presence of one anomaly in the teeth is an indication that there might be another one. The knowledge of various criteria for the identification and classification of different abnormalities is key to diagnosing the condition in order to perform appropriate treatment. Thank you.